Hello and welcome to another DGCAD Revit 8.1 A to Z lesson and we're on uh, lesson 36 here which is our um, families where part 5 here is all about um, our Revit families and we've gone through the prerequisite for all of this which is all the rules and the basics of creating families and templates and all of that good stuff and we've been working our way through to different types of families and now we've gone through our windows and we've gone through our doors and one of the ones that I have always found in the beginning of Revit to be difficult was understanding how electrical and lighting families um, worked and hopefully this will clear up a lot of your problems so um, families with electrical and lighting the first thing is of course if you're going to create one from scratch in your family editor you need to make sure you use the right template file um, again you can open up an existing family and you can edit that and do a save as um, and you can always see your families listed in your project browser so here's just some examples of um, some electrical and lighting so we've got a light switch a single pole we've got an outlet um, receptacle duplex outlet there we've got a sconce lighting and then we've just got an independently freestanding lamp and these are just some variations of the different electrical and lighting um, components and families that we have and really electrical combines all of the the previous lessons as in you know whether it is wall hosted or floor hosted and using a little bit of uh, massing um, to create these shapes by using um, extrudes and revolutions and sweeps etc and what happens with electrical is they take full advantage of all the aspects of families because depending on which way you view will depend on which um, display of that family it will throw out there for you so when you look in plan view for instance it won't um, show you this particular mass element that mass element is told to be only viewed in or not to be viewed in plan or cut plan view and in instead what it does is it has a nested annotation that it says to display and that's locally uh, saved in that family file of an, an S with a little stem on it and we'll see that so this is a nested um, annotation family within the uh, light switch um, family itself so depending on the view angle you're looking at will depend on which one it shows you the same as with the um, outlet over here there's an outlet nested annotation within the family and if you look in 3d it shows you this and then if you look in plan it looks like this then we have our sconce light our sconce light is is a mass element and it is a revolution around a single axis going 180 degrees and with that over here um, even though it would show in uh, the in model view what they have done or what they've the the out of the box Revit is they use symbol lines to trace the mass element so what you see here is not really the mass element it is symbol lines these are annotation um, families nested these are symbol lines and over here these are symbol lines as well for this one this is is not shown really in plan view instead you we have our symbol lines so four different ways of of having these families and it works quite nice um, and lights will throw light when rendered so when you put lights in here there's three axes the base three axes in these uh, families themselves defines where the light actually the light source will be and then it's up to your rendering when you add the lights to it so there's a front back center um, axis there's three axes when you create this family and where they intersect that's where the light source will be and then that's as far as you can go with the family as far as lighting goes then it's up to the rendering and adding lighting to that object um, and it knows where those axes are and then you can define that radiosity and how that light will work when you render. Um, you can also when you create a, a lighting fixture um, it comes with um, predetermined parameters for lumens and watts and you can put those in when you create the family so that when you add the light source it knows how bright of a light it is and then you can create different types of course so you can have this lamp with 100 watts or 150 watts or 200 watts etc same as with ceiling lights ceiling lights are hosted by a ceiling this is hosted by a wall and this isn't really hosted by anything it just happens to be sitting on the floor these are hosted by the wall okay so we'll see that with our template files um, comp so really what they are are they are a composite collection of massing objects symbol lines 
and nested local annotation in this case um, to create these families. The family uh, views differently based on the view angle as I've just explained. Um, you need to render to see the true effect of lighting, uh, the lighting emissions. So to get the uh, lighting to work we need to render it. Okay, Outlet, outlet uh, Duplex family has a locally nested annotation family that we can see only from the plan view. Okay, this, uh, this could have been created with an in-place family. So that annotation symbol here only sits within this family and you can save it out if you want. Okay, some light fixtures in Revit building emit light from one um, fixed point. That point is the intersection of the three references as I've just said. These are references in those base templates. That's where the light bulb will be. Uh, and really the Revit family contains everything but the light itself. The light is provided, the actual light is provided on the rendering um, in the design bar. Okay, and just some tips here is the ratio of lumens to watts is approximately 17 to 1 and fluor for fluorescent lights the ratio is approximately 60 lumens per 1 watt. And This is right out of the, uh, the Revit help menu. If you do not specify value for lumens, Revit building assumes uh, 1700 lumens which is about 100 watts. So let's go in and have a look at some of these uh, objects in here in our Revit. So we'll go over to here and here's our drawing. So let's just start with our fixture. Now first of all I'm looking in a 3D view. If I use my shift and of course if I click on an object and then do a shift you spin about that one object, right? Everyone knows that by now. So you click on there and now I'll swivel about that point. So if I go to my top view, okay, it looks like this. Now I'm in a project file, I'm not in a Revit family file, but it's smart enough to know that, you know, that is a family, that is a family, okay? So if I look at it once again in 3D, it's going to look like this and then if I look at it in elevation maybe let's look from the south it looks like that okay let's look from the east okay you're gonna see a, a little projection there they are right oh they're sitting back I think that's that door frame beyond we're seeing so there is actually it's showing that 3d mass element so the only time it really shows this annotation guy is, is from plan so I'm just going to click on this, or I could click on it in the 3D view, and I can say Edit Family. I'm going to go in, opens up the Family Editor, shows that object. Okay, there's my light switch. Okay, I can look at here, and I can look at the parameters of that, and I can see, okay, well, there's the light switch. It's got a height, and that height, um, width and placement height, 4 feet, and that's to the underside of the light switch. So this is the actual physical height and width of the light switch and it looks like I've only got one type. I could go in and make new type inside of here and put new numbers in for the width and height if I wanted. So we could have different sizes light switch and then we can have different heights maybe depending on, on and if we hit modify that is a type parameter and if we look at the widths those are also type parameters. Okay so you if you want to change if you if you insert this and change the four feet it'll change all of them. So you'd want to go in here now and say new and then call it one that has a light switch at a different height for instance and then hard code that number in there. So those are just some of the um, parameters on that particular object that control it and again if I go to my views and I go to my elevation go to my uh, placement side it's gonna look like that okay if I do a shade SD for shaded view you can see there's my placement height there's my different numbers height okay equal space it evenly along that point okay to the underside and if I go to my floor plan and I go to here all of a sudden I get to this and this is where I know I became very confused at one point like what is going on and what's happening here is if I click on here this is a nested family. If I actually go to my families in this family editor and I look there is a switch symbol right here. Okay so there's a nested this is a little switch annotation. Okay I can bring one in if I want. Okay that is actually made inside of this um, particular family, so nested family right inside of here. Now in this point I'm going to type in VG and I'm going to go in and I'm going to turn my walls on and hit OK and then you're going to see how you know that just happened to be turned off. Okay, There's my mass element right there. Okay, if I, if I hover over that there's my mass element. If I check the visibility of that what it says is don't show it when you're in plan view. So although I can kind of see it here it's grayed out when I'm in plan view it's not going to show. All it's going to show is this. Okay. Now I'm going to click on this and let's say for instance back in my project file if I go back to here 
and I go to my main floor, let's say that S is too big because I actually think the Revit S is too big and I want to edit that. Okay, I would go in here, edit the family, go into here, okay, and then I would click on this and edit that family, yes. Now I'm editing kind of a local family and I can take this first of all and I can, oops, click on that, bring that down a little bit, okay, take this, and then move it, you know, nudge it down maybe. Okay, then I can redraw this if I want because I, I might want to go in here and do a resize and say, you know, numerical based on here and then I can give, oops, different number. I'm not going to get into detail. Go in here, you know, make this smaller. Redesign this shape as, as you want. Okay. Maybe move it over. Okay move it back redefine that as you want and then all we do is we load that and we load it back into our single switch project okay now and yes we're gonna update it okay now we're gonna have our new S shape in this family and now if I go and take this and publish it out to my project 6 and redefine it now I've redefined that right down there not a very nice S but full circle of going through and redefining that shape. Same thing as in here. I can click on here, edit the family, yes. Okay, then I can look at this. I can go back to my plan view, double click. Again, there's my mass element, VG, maybe want to turn my walls on so I can see the association. Okay, click on this object, edit it, yes. I go in, maybe, you know, make this smaller, do whatever I want with it click on these, bring them down, save it, publish it, no, nope. cancel. I'm just going to load it into my project and that is the outlet duplex. Hit OK. Yes, I want to overwrite it. Okay, right back to here. So then full circle on that one as well. Go back into the family, yes. Okay load that to the project 6 reload it and then I can see this has been redefined so that's a nice little trick that I most people find confusing in the beginning is how these are controlled let's just go back in here one more time these two are very similar the light switch and the um, so again in my 3d view spin around okay have a look at it. In elevation, etc., we have different views, and then because it's inside of here, okay, it's only visible. Uh, visibility, okay, is inside of there, and and there's symbol lines. That's the key there. Is these were created with symbol lines, only visible from that current view. Okay. Now that is a little sub family from that sits inside of here. Outlet, right? That's this one it's not really sitting on the C drive anywhere. If you actually go looking for outlet uh, annotation .rfa, you won't find it. But what you can do is you can go in here and you can click right click and you can save and then you can take that and save that as a family file and use it in other to nest it in other um, families. So that was a bit tricky trying to figure that one out in the beginning I know myself. So nested family only in this local file and then you can save it out. Okay, so let's have a look back at our project six here and uh, see what else we have. Okay, so that's kind of what is going on with these guys. And these ones, we'll just click on that light again, hit edit family. Yes, we go inside of there. Okay, this one's a bit different. It's still a, it's a mass element. If I hit edit, I can go look at that. There's my axis. We'll do a little bit on massing later. There's my axis of revolution okay and then there's my shape that's revolved around and if I check the properties of that of course it says revolve by 180 degrees okay hit cancel and quit that sketch so that's all that is and this is just a model line which is put in there okay and then we can look at now because this is a lighting if we go file new and we go family and if you pick well uh, oops And then we sort here and we go to electrical um, fixture 
And let's see where we have our lighting. We have lighting fixture, ceiling base, lighting fixture, wall base, lighting fixture, generic, lighting fixture, ceiling, uh, linear lighting, linear lighting, linear lighting. Okay, so all different types of lighting when you want to you have to get the correct one and, and we know, need to know a little bit about rendering but that's okay so then you start off with the right template and what happens then is that you will look inside of here and you will see that there is lumens and lamps uh, the lamp actually the number of the lumens and the wattage that you can put inside of here based on the template file you start with okay now on top of that if we go to our let's go to our elevational views here and let's just actually go to our top view okay there's our top view and if we click on here we can see light source axis light source axis okay so that's our light source axis and if we go to the elevation for instance the left we will see another axis over here light source axis so where those three this one this one and this one intersect that is right there in 3d where the light will be and then when you apply a light to this object in with rendering when we go down to our rendering tab that's where the light will be so having said that let's go back to our say our front view okay and uh, we can look at the, the objects inside of there and go back to our 3d view for instance and swivel that around okay so all that is 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 a uh, a very it's all starts with the template then we did we would do a revolve and then we would make sure our axis is we're all uh, sitting in the right place and then if we go just quickly back to here we'll notice that when we go to the top plan view I'm gonna hover over here that's a revolve if I click on that object and check the visibility it's not being shown in plan view however if I click out and I click there there's a symbol line there symbol line and that's what you're actually seeing back in the project as well as somewhere in here there's another one a symbol line so this symbol line and this symbol line are shown this object is not shown and then the wall of course hosting object is not shown as well and you can see there's the front so that's a little bit about that lighting we can just close that one off don't need to save it and then we can go back to here and this one very similar click on that edit the family that again we can load these by going into uh, our project and going to component and then load and then we can go into here and we can look for lighting fixtures and then we can scroll through here some of these are linear lighting some of them aren't okay we can bring these are just default sizes inside of here I'm gonna hit cancel okay and I'm gonna hit escape I'm gonna click on this edit the family go in to have a look at that and then we can see that you know this is just a combination of mass elements one thing I notice I probably want to do here is join this and this so I'm gonna go into here and I'm gonna say join geometry and join those two just so I get a, a nice clean connection there and then these are just different mass elements there's nothing fancy this is if I go in and edit that that's just an extrude off of that axis and if we check the properties of that it'll have you know minus three up to you know ten inches so there's my minus three and there's my you know ten and then I can quit that and then I can have a look at this again mass elements we can click on these anytime you want and change the shape of these right while we're in the family editor I can do what I want with this Okay, same as I could go down to here, click this base, and take that, do the same type of thing, right? So we can modify these quite easily while in the family editor because they're just straightforward masses. Now, if I go back to my top view, we need to see where our light source is going to be here. Okay, you can see in here, there is my base and there is my light. If I click on here, it says light source, light source, okay? The, the intersection of that is our light source. Let's have a look at our elevation here. Elevation, let's go to the right side. Okay, again, click on there. Light source. So there's our triple axis right there where our light would be. Okay, and that will depend really on, on the um, template file that you start off with um, as far as um, the creating of lighting fixtures. And then we could just simply uh, uh, load this into our project, hit yes, we do a redefinition, and there's my new uh, lighting fixture inside of there. 
And then the last step we'd want to do is go into our uh, rendering as far as lighting goes inside of here. And then we need to uh, add some lights and add some uh, lighting groups to our lighting objects that we placed in here. Thank you for uh, tuning in for another uh, DGCAD lesson on electrical families and lighting. Hopefully that uh, helps to uh, clear up a little bit of the uh, maybe confusion on what's going on and how things are behaving with electrical symbols.